Good afternoon, I'm Vashan Brown with the Midday News. A special welcome if you're watching on OneSpotMedia.com. There are conflicting stories surrounding the death of 17-year-old Anthony Bernard, otherwise called Okim, or Bambels of Old Road Lucy in Hanover. Information from the police is that Bernard was fatally shot during a confrontation with them in his community about 10.40 on Saturday morning. However, residents had a different version of the story. They told our news center that a confrontation with Bernard and a man developed over a spliff which was being smoked by Bernard. It's understood that Bernard left the location and returned with a machete. The man then identified himself as a police officer. According to the residents, Bernard then turned and walked away. It's at that point the residents said he was shot in the back. An investigation has since been launched into the incident by the Independent Commission of Investigations, Indicom, and the Inspectorate and Professional Standards Oversight Bureau. The government is moving to open more drop-in centers as it tries to reduce the number of people living on the streets. Speaking at World Homeless Day in St. Mary recently, a representative from the Ministry of Local Government, Venetia Clark-Lee, says the centers will open soon. We have a total of four that have been operationalized and two that are left to be completed. So we have open drop-in centers in St. Anne, Hanover, St. Mary, and St. Elizabeth. And shortly we'll be opening in Trelawney and St. Thomas. In the meantime, with approximately 17 persons registered with the St. Mary Drop-in Center, Councillor for the Hampstead Division and Chairperson for the Homeless Committee, Mitzi Hudson, says more needs to be done to fully address the situation. She argued that not all homeless persons have mental health issues and that stigma should be removed. We must play our part in trying to assist the less fortunate among us. And the purpose or the drive behind this committee is to assist those persons who are not mentally challenged to be reintegrated into society to lead prosperous lives. Currently, there are 1,971 registered homeless people island-wide. There are calls this afternoon for the case involving former Education Minister Rill Reed and his four co-accused to move speedily through the courts. The issue was raised on TVJ's Small Jamaica this morning. We have more in this report. Executive Director of Integrity Body, the NIA, Professor Trevor Monroe, says the case involving former Education Minister Royal Reed and his four co-accused should not be dragged out as was the case during the Cuban light bulb matter. In that case, former Junior Energy Minister Karen Spencer was freed of corruption allegations in 2014, nearly six years after he was charged. Mr. Reed and his co-accused were last week given a January 23 return date when they appeared before the Corporate Area Criminal Court. They have been charged in a major corruption probe involving the Caribbean Maritime University. Speaking on TVJ Small Jamaica this morning, Professor Monroe says protracted delays should no longer be a feature of court matters. At the same time, he says the January return date is not unusual. It sounds not too bad, actually, given the nature of the court that we have. Yeah. Um, but I'm hoping after January, we have a speedy process. So we're not talking about years, which I hear some professionals saying that's likely to be the case, but months. It's too important a case. He says law enforcement in the Caribbean is moving in the right direction in responding to allegations of corruption. Last month or a couple of months ago, Trinidad and Tobago, Minister of Transport arrested along with her, her husband in Barbados, Antigua. What seems to be happening is that our law enforcers in the Caribbean seem to be catching up with the rest of the world. Where, you know, the law is enforced, whether it's South Korea or the president or Italy with the former prime minister or France with the former president, without fear or favor. You go where the evidence leads you and don't cry out this foolishness that we've had in the past. If you don't own, the law applies. Yeah, if you yeah. uptown, it doesn't. If I he has also renewed his call for an update on the Integrity Commission's probe into allegations of corruption at Petrojam. He says for such a major issue, it is taking too long for the findings to be released to the public. The public needs to know and needs to hear from the Integrity Commission what's happening to that Petrojam report. So, in a way, Neville Simon, our system 
is working, but it's working too slowly. We would not have heard anything about Petrojam, nor Will Reed, nor the other ministers of the past, if the parliamentary committees didn't do their digging, if it wasn't followed up by the media in conversations like this, and if the law enforcers didn't do their job subsequently. So the system needs to be strengthened, it needs to work more efficiently, but we the public have to play our part. We have to speak up when we see what we see, call into anonymous calls. I mean, the Auditor General has a hotline, you don't need to give your name, mm -hmm. crime stop. We need to give more support, we need to take more steps if we want more action. In its first annual report in July, the Integrity Commission said it has completed its investigation into allegations of financial irregularities at Petrojam and was forwarding the findings to its Director of Corruption Prosecution, Dirk Harrison, to determine whether to prosecute persons in the Petrojam scandal. However, Mr. Harrison resigned last month and no additional information has been forthcoming. O'Shane Masters, TVJ News. There are cries for help this afternoon from residents in Yalla St. Thomas following heavy rains which caused flooding this morning. Residents claim water from off the road gushed into several yards, depositing debris from the road onto their properties. We need the councillor, the minister, somebody to come come. See what's going on with us, brother. We are suffering. The whole of the land is washed. Not even to mention all my sling down there, sir. Pooling of them people here. They can't come out of them house. Yeah, the what? water what happened? the street mm -hmm. and come right down, right through the yard and go over next door. I have to put a piece of pallet in front of my doorway. Very bad. One person spoke to TVJ News about the loss she suffered as a result of the flooding. By one load of salami treat, the sand, the rain washer, the wall of it, hey, everything washed away. Pure water come now, yes, up and we. All now we all sit and come, we can't live, yes, so. And it's now time for a break, but stay with us. More stories after these messages. Welcome back. Continuing the news. Mayor of Port Maria, Richard Crary, is urging officers of the St. Mary Municipal Corporation to get the plastic bottle recycling plant up and running. Speaking at the last Municipal Council monthly meeting, Mayor Crary says he's been having discussions on the issue for months and nothing has been done. He says plastic bottles continue to end up in the sea, resulting in a major environmental problem for the parish. Everything is up there. All we need to do is put staff in place. Persons can start carrying the bottles there. And I can, I have, I'm sure it is in excess of a year we've been having these discussions. And we're getting nowhere. It is ridiculous. So Mr. Sinclair, I'm going to beg you. Go find the correspondence. If it was not done, ensure that it is done. Don't only write and leave it at that. Make calls. Mr. Douglas, may I beg you to do it too? Call recycle partners because they are just as frustrated as me. The Jamaica Defense Forces Disaster Assistance Response Team, DART, has returned from its post-Hurricane Dorian mission in the Bahamas. At a ceremony held upon their return, Prime Minister Andrew Holness is seeking to assure the country that adequate preparation has been made for effective local disaster response. He says the DART is currently equipped to handle local events and assist neighboring countries if needed. The Chief of Defense Staff, in keeping with that mandate, has informed me that measures are being put in place, and indeed, you have expanded your numbers in the Disaster Assistance Response Team, and uh, that we should be able to operate, if there were a disaster, in Jamaica, to secure Jamaica, as well as to assist if need should arise with our neighbors. Mr. Holness says though there is the need for increased personnel, he's confident in the current JDF recruitment efforts. In terms of the human capacity, the sheer numbers, we should be able to provide that certainly with our new recruitment strategy under the Jamaica National Service Corps. We have also sought to expand our mobility, certainly with the acquisition of new helicopters. What we do not now currently have is airlift capacity. 
News from the region now. Thousands of Haitians packed the streets in Port-au-Prince yesterday to call for President Jovenel Moise's resignation, singing and dancing in a carnival-like protest led by artists after weeks of intensifying anti-government demonstrations. Up to about 10,000 people, including men and women, wearing white in a show of solidarity, marched in the capital and its outskirts to music blasting from trucks outfitted with powerful speakers. Unlike previous marches in which protesters clashed with police, the day was largely peaceful. Opposition leaders and their supporters in the nation of 11 million people have, been called, have called for Mr. Moise to step down as anger grows over fuel and food shortages, a steep currency devaluation and corruption allegations. Mr. Moise, who has denied wrongdoing, has taken few public steps to address the grievances, adding to anger at the government. He took office in 2017 and has two years left in his term. Time now for sports. Mount Alvernia High, Camperdown, St. Catherine, the Queen's School, Dunoon and Holy Childhood all scored victories in the latest set of matches in the ISA Rural and Urban Area Senior Netball Competitions. Mount Alvernia was the most impressive winner on the day when they blanked Hopewell 76 for 0 in Zone A of the Rural Area League. In the Urban Area, Camperdown also blanked Tivoli 49 for 0. St. Catherine ran over Greater Portmore 54 for 16, while the Queen's School got the better of Merle Grove 31 20. Meanwhile, Danoon stopped Tarrant 27 8, Holy Childhood beat Arden 32 18, and Jonathan Grant defeated Kingston Technical 25 for 9. In the Junior League, St. James beat Cambridge 22 for 4. Green Island got the better of Rhodes Hall, 15 for 13, while Froome defeated Merlin Otte, 18 for 6 in the rural area. St. Catherine were 11 times better than Greater Portmore after their 33-3 victory in the Urban Area League, while Camperdown got by Tivoli, 18-12, and Waterford outscored Spanish Town, 22-19. In other matches, Arden turned the table on Holy Childhood, beating them 31 for 10. Tarrant also did the reverse on Danoon, stopping them 20 for 5, as did Merle Grove over the Queen's School with a 36-16 victory, while Eltham outlasted Heidel 18 for 13. And that's the Midday News. I'm Vashon Brown. Don't forget to join us at 7 for Primetime News Package. On behalf of the news, sports and production teams, have a good afternoon.